So we now, um, uh, in the previous part, we discussed two, uh, met two approaches that one could took, take. This is called background field method. Using this method, uh, one can proceed and eventually calculate the effective action. Uh, here, uh, we directly calculate the, uh, the generating functional uh, by semi-classically expanding around a classical solution. And, uh, and see what uh, the effective action looks like in that case. So, so that's what we are going to discuss now, um, calculating effective action um, in semi-classical expansion. So recall um, from um, recall in a non-relativistic uh, quantum mechanics, what we did is to expand the action around uh, around the classical solution in a specific manner. Expand. First, we define uh, uh, the fluctuation phi lower bar plus root h bar times chi. Phi lower bar is the solution and chi is the, is the fluctuation. And then write uh, the Taylor expansion of is phi comma j, because that's the object with, with which we define generating functional um, and expand in powers of chi. So this will be the first term and then del is del phi calculated at phi lower bar times chi um, plus uh, half del two is del phi at x1 del phi at x2 calculate this derivative at phi lower bar then chi at x1 chi at x2 and integrate over one and two and so on, right? And this part is going to be zero when I choose uh, the uh, fiber, uh, when fiber is, when fiber, phi lower bar is a classical solution. Now the form of the action, uh, we are choosing a more explicit form of the action and hence the equation of motion uh, are as follows. So action uh, is phi j is equal to minus half del mu phi, del mu phi minus half m square phi square minus the potential v phi plus h bar j times phi, uh, which is the source term. And from here, um, you get del s del phi. If you calculate that, that will be del squared phi uh, calculated at phi lower bar uh, minus m squared phi lower bar minus v prime phi lower bar plus h bar j, and that's equal to zero. For the same action, if you calculate the double derivative, um, um, calculate it at phi lower bar, then the kinetic part will be, become a purely uh, an operator, differential operator, which is this del square uh, minus m square minus v double prime, calculated at phi lower bar. This whole thing is at x1, but multiplied with uh, delta x1 minus x2, I mean, acting on delta x1 minus x2, which is, uh, uh, so that's that's a differential operator. Um, then we calculate uh, zj, the generating functional for the corrected uh, uh, diagrams, but that comes from wj, 
which has the definition d phi e to the power i over h bar s phi comma j divided by integral d phi e to the power i over h bar s phi. And this is phi comma j uh, will be uh, will will have this expansion. Um, we'll have the expansion right here uh, with um, phi bar with phi bar satisfying this equation and this uh, this second derivative given by this expression. That's what we are calculating. Um, this uh, is. Uh, up to an overall constant uh, must be therefore because it the, 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 it starts with the classical contribution and then the quadratic piece linear piece being zero uh, will be i by h bar s phi lower bar j which is the classical action classical part uh, calculated at the classical solution times uh, a path integral chi e to the power i by two, because, um, uh, so there's a small mistake here. Um, since we have taken the fluctuation to be uh, square root h bar times chi, each chi factor has a factor of square root h bar. So therefore, uh, I should have a factor of square root h bar here. And, and a factor of h bar here. And that h bar factor cancels this one over h bar and uh, we have order one uh, phase here. This is what we saw in earlier in non relativistic quantum mechanics as well. Now at this point, proceed to proceed further, you see we have to calculate this, this, this integral. And this can, integral is calculable because it's a, I mean, Gaussian-like integral, but uh, this, except for the fact that it is, it is e to the power phase, and in order to make that calculation well-defined, we have to Euclidianize. So we now Euclidianize, you go to the Euclidean theory and uh, do every calculation in that. Now recall that uh, the, the process of uh, Euclidianization is just replace T by minus I U and then Euclidean action is integral D U um, L bar and the prescription for calculating L bar is minus times the original Lagrangian with Euclidianization. Take the original Lagrangian inside that replace do this replacement and um, then multiply by an overall minus factor, then that gives you L bar, integral du of L bar is the action. And in the path integral, uh, instead of this, you have it to the power, instead of I s, you will have I s will be replaced by minus s bar. That's how, that's how it works. And our notation are usually, uh, um, Euclid, in Euclidean version, we use a bar, uh, and Euclidean field, Euclidean I, if the field in the Euclidean theory is phi bar of x bar, which is numerically same as phi of x, the source j bar x bar is same as j of x, and uh, uh, x bar uh, zero is equal to i x zero, x bar zero, which I called u here, and i x zero t, and x bar i is same as x i. So this is how you, whatever I have written so far uh, in this page uh, can be converted into expressions in the Euclidean theory. And in the Euclidean theory, uh, our variables will have these bars, both the, um, uh, um, the, the coordinates, the space-time coordinates and the fields and so on. Now uh, we are moving to the Euclidean theory and uh, 
but then these bars are going to cause a lot of uh, you know uh, complicated notations so we get rid of this part with under bars with understanding that um, that we are working in the Euclidean theory so um, following analysis is done in Euclidean theory and remove all Euclidean bars for notational simplicity. This is what we're going to do. We will not talk about the real time things uh, for a while, so uh, there's no uh, confusion. Show that in this Euclidean theory, Wj, which is actually W bar of J bar, but we have removed that. So we should interpret all these equation in the same fashion. This Wj is actually W bar of, of, of J bar in the actual notation, but we have gotten rid of those bars, so I'm writing Wj. It's in the Euclidean theory, is an overall constant times e to the power minus one over h bar is phi. Lower bar is a classical solution and j. This is also s bar, phi bar. Uh, this is s bar, this is phi bar, and this is j bar. We are removing that upper bar, um, as I just mentioned. Similarly, the other part is integral d chi exponential minus half. Um, del 2 s del phi 1 del phi 2 phi lower bar where is phi comma j is given by half del mu phi del mu phi in the Euclidean theory my uh, the the metric uh, the signature is all plus one so uh, uh, so the the metric uh, eta mu nu uh, becomes delta mu nu and therefore upper mu and lower mu are same so uh, this is one indication that we are dealing with writing them in this manner um, indicates that we are dealing with Euclidean theory so I I would sometimes write in this way but it doesn't matter if I write upper mu or lower mu um half m square phi square plus v phi minus h bar j phi and del s del phi at phi lower bar is equal to minus del square phi lower bar square phi lower bar. So I will refer this to as the classical equation. Um, and this is of course Euclidean uh, Laplacian. And this minus J square plus M square. V double prime by lower bar at one delta x one minus x two. I'll call this as operator equation. Then the reason we came to this Euclidean version was to do this um, was to do this Gaussian integral here. So let us discuss that. Um, Functional Gaussian integral. So, in or in, in ordinary um, Gaussian integral is given by integral dx minus a mu to plus infinity e to the power minus alpha x square. The result is root over of pi by alpha. Now, this says that if I had multivariable 
uh, integral of this sort um, minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus alpha one x one square and so on to alpha n x n square, then I will be having pi to the power n by two um, um, times alpha one to alpha n product to the power minus half. It's one over root alpha, so one over root alpha one times one over root alpha two and so on. Now, if I had, um, um, uh, so this uh, looks like um, uh, we can interpret this as, uh, as integral, say dy1 to dyn e to the power minus um, y transpose alpha y. Um, where alpha is, a, is an n by n matrix. Um, then, uh, then uh, so if I had an integral of this sort, if I had an integral of this sort, then that would be same as this one if this alpha one to alpha n are the eigenvalues of this matrix and y, uh, y which is a column vector here, with elements y1, y2, and so on, uh, is related to by uh, a, a matrix uh, x1 to xn, uh, where this r is the diagonalizing matrix. So, um, so this will be true if uh, y transpose alpha y, uh, y is equal to r times uh, r acting on x. So x transpose R transpose alpha x, uh, R transpose alpha is a matrix here, R times x, where this is a diagonal um, uh, with eigenvalues given by alpha one to alpha n. Then this will be the same. This will be the same result provided uh, the measure. Uh, and this one and this one are same. So show, this is an exercise, show um, that uh, dx1 to dxn is same as dy1 to dyn, which means the integration measure remains unchanged under this um, under this uh, linear transformation, this is what you have to show. Mm. Then, uh, then basically, uh, uh, since this this expression can be interpreted in this way, then the question is how how can we interpret this in terms of this alpha matrix? So this is um, pi to the power um, pi to the power n by two determinant alpha to the power minus half. Okay. So this is, uh, um, when uh, this is the result when we have a uh, countable um, finite number of degrees of freedom in this integral, but we are going to formally generalize it to path integral, uh, thinking that path integral can be first discretized as we have demonstrated, discussed uh, several times earlier. And then, uh, then it becomes a countable number of degrees of countable and finite number of degrees of freedom. And then finally take in going, going to infinity limit and uh, and basically we have a exponentiated uh, quadratic operator and um, and then and this quadratic term with an operator in, inserted 
and, and then we get the result determinant of that, that operator to be minus half. So, uh, okay, so I have to go to the next. Um, so let me write down the result here and the formal result um, here is, so generalize formally, maybe write formal generalization to path integral tells you that um, integral d chi um, e to the power minus half um, Let me call that O chi one, O chi two, one comma two um, is given, is proportional to, we have the square root of uh, uh, pi to the power n by two. And uh, also there is in here, we have this alpha, but, uh, but in my, in our operator, uh, we could have a prefactor here, that prefactor, uh, the power of that prefactor will also appear here. So we remove all these powers and uh, write uh, the, all the constant pieces and write this as a proportional to uh, determinant um, determinant this operator O um, to the power minus half. Where um, this O is given by minus del squared plus M squared plus V double prime pi lower bar delta one, delta X one minus X two. And this, this overall factor is doesn't matter because our result for the generating functional WJ is given uh, by uh, some up to an overall constant, that overall constant just changes N to N prime um, by absorbing this, this constant here from the Gaussian integral. And then the result will be one over H bar. Um, uh, okay, so before that, let me, write that uh, integral, the determinant in a different way. So uh, you use um, determinant of an operator, uh, determinant of an operator can be written as e to the power trace of that operator. Um, so um, minus half trace um, uh, log O. This is the expression this is an alternative expression for determinant, determinant of an operator. And the reason is that um, uh, determinant O, uh, determinant O is, uh, is a product of eigenvalues, say lambda one to lambda, uh, uh, lambda one, lambda two, and so on, in a, in a, in a countably, um, countable, in the case of countable degrees of freedom. And, uh, each lambda can then be written as e to the power log lambda one, then times e to the power log lambda two, that is some log lambda two in the exponent and so on. And, uh, and uh, <coughs> that is nothing but, uh, so this is sum over log lambda i's, uh, which is basically um, e to the power trace log o. So log lambda uh, one, log lambda two are the, um, and so on are the eigenvalues of log O operator. So this is the eigenvalue of log O operator. And the sum of them is basically the trace. So this is what we are using here. By using the, we, you can get, you can write this result alternatively in this form. And then, um, Uh, then this, uh, this um, functional, the generating functional is then given by this classical part 
देन माइनस हाफ ट्रेस लॉग ओ एंड दैट इज एंड एंड सो ऑन एंड दैट मस बी इक्वल टू टू दी पावर जेड ऑफ जे व्हिच इज द कनेक्टेड जेनरेटिंग फंक्शन ऑफ सो दैट सेज दैट जेड ऑफ जे इज गिवन बाय um up to an um, overall up to an additive constant um is minus 1 over h bar is by over by g plus h bar by 2 trace log o so this is a uh, up to an um, additive constant okay and uh, refer to that equation as z okay this is the result that we get um remember that uh mm, Uh, phi bar phi lower bar is a uh, is a classical solution of uh, this is a, is a solution to this equation and what we have to appreciate is the following that uh, this classical solution uh, is uh, has to be obtained for arbitrary j and and uh, that's not an easy thing to do what one can do is to this this can be solved in the using the greens function method um and uh, we can discuss that later i will not i'm not going to discuss the greens function method right here but it's a non linear equation and uh, with a source and uh, using the greens function uh, method uh, we have a series solution where uh, each term comes with a certain power of j so phi lower bar can be it is written in a and it's a is a sum of infinite number of terms each having a certain power of j and therefore phi lower bar should be viewed as a functional of j so that is how the solution is going to be obtained phi lower bar is a functional functional of j and also it's being a local field it's a function of a local uh, uh, space time point as well as i, I as i had explained earlier so therefore Uh, these operator which is which are calling o which involves v double prime of phi lower bar which is a function of uh, j so this operator is also a function of phi lower bar which is a function of j so what we have to keep in mind is that this o is a function of phi lower bar which is a function of j so you can either look at it as a functional of phi lower bar or um um or if phi lower bar is replaced by its functional form in terms of j then it's a functional of j so that is how one uh, we have to look at it okay 